Hello everyone, thank you all so much for coming today. I would like to start us off by just asking who here has seen a loon and where you've seen it before. Come on, lots of hands. All right, we can just start on this side. Where have you seen it? Uh, Sunset Lake. Sunset Lake, okay, so pretty local, yeah. Lake Michigan. Lake Michigan, okay, cool. Central Wisconsin, Lake Okaka. Okay, yeah. I saw one on the river downtown. <gasps> wow. Yeah, that was unusual. That was yeah. interesting. Yeah. Um, Oak Lake had my cabin up in Omaha, Wisconsin, which is near Mercer, the loon capital of Iowa. <laughs> <laughs> uh, North Lake, just north of Iowa. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Newman Lake. North Park Falls. Okay. <coughs> it's hard to tie down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've seen I hear you. kayaking in several mm -hmm. lakes in northern Michigan and northern Wisconsin. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen them on Isle Royale. Mm -hmm. okay. Maybe, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. And the dogs. Yeah, they are rare here. Loons actually use Lake Jonas as a rest stop on their journeys to the north and south on their on their migration route. So we'll talk a little bit about that. Is anyone else not sure? So on a crystal lake in Boulder Junction. Oh, yeah. sorry. Very Just up cool. North. Well, thank you all so much for sharing. Appreciate that. So yeah, so our topic, as you'll probably know, is loons on the lake. So. We might not see a loon on the lake today because it is pretty late in the year, but you never know. So keep your eyes open for that. Um, so yeah, my name is Abby Jackson. I am a student at UWSP studying biology, water resources, and environmental education and interpretation. Um, yeah. So like Chris said, we're gonna be walking down to Lake Jonas and back, just so everyone is aware of that. There are some boardwalk portions that shouldn't be slick or anything, but just watch your step. So yeah, so our theme for today are that common loons are powerful, intelligent, um, mi migratory birds, and they use Schmeekly and Lake Jonas as a rest stop on their mi on their migration routes. So yeah, uh, we also have an activity to do during the program today. So Alex has some passports for us. So at some, at some of the stops, not all of them, you will have an opportunity to get your passport stamped. So we're going to start off by just talking about some of the moon's general characteristics. So I'm going to walk around with a picture, and as I walk around, if you guys would like to just share some of the things you observe about the moon. It's fine to have repeats too, but just say what you see. Oh, that's very cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You should have greenish head. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like the iridescent green yes. kind of. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, those are great observations. So, and you, you guys hit a lot of them. So they have a pretty sharp beak. That's their main way of hunting and catching food for themselves. They weigh about 10 pounds on average. There are actually five species of loons in the northern hemisphere but the common loon is the only one that nests in the main 48 states of the united states so that's the one we're focusing on today um and one interesting fact about loons is that they have 
they have solid bones. Can anyone give any ideas on why they might have solid bones? So they can dive? Yeah, right? So it makes them heavier. So it makes them have a greater ability to dive deeper and faster to catch their fish, which th this also makes it more difficult for them to fly because they are heavier. So that will come into play a little bit later. So a lot of people commented on the red eyes. So we can see in the plumage or the, the, the feathers of the loon that this is a loon in the, in the summer or in its mating season. So its eyes are really vibrant red, right? Well, actually, when they're in their winter plumage and their winter areas, their eyes are a little bit of a different color. So what do you notice about the eyes in this picture? That, well, the brown is less vivid than red. Are we in the winter season? Um, we are approaching that, yep. So a lot of moons have started migrating south for the winter. So yeah, yep, yeah. So the red eyes are actually a, a huge advantage for loons during the mating season because it attracts mates and it, and it also wards off other, other males because loons are quite territorial. So the red eyes are kind of like an int intimidation factor in some ways and it helps the loon just assert, assert dominance over its territory and attract mates as well. So, yeah. so does both the male and the female get red eyes? Yes. Yep, but the, the the male primarily uses it for territorial things, and then they attract mates also. So yeah. So here's a picture of its legs. So I think you mentioned. So they are set very far back on its body, which makes it pretty clumsy and awkward for them to walk on land. So that's probably why most people haven't seen a loon on land, right? Because they are designed to stay in the water, their body is streamlined and it makes it very efficient for them to stay in the water and dive for their fish or whatever they're eating. So yeah. So we are going to move to our next stop now. I think for the sake of time we're just going to give all your passport stamps at the end. Um, so I think does anyone have any questions before we move on at all? Alrighty, well we're gonna keep heading down this path. So yeah, if you wanna follow me. Alright, this is our next stop, so feel free to use the Did everyone hear that? No? Okay. Let's see if I can get it louder here. Okay. Did everyone get a chance to hear it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, our next thing on our passport is to imitate a loon call. So, <laughs> three, if we could all try to imitate that loon call, that loon call together. Well, that one that we just did. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. On three. Ready? <laughs> one, two, three. Sounds like a wolf howling is what a lot of people think. 
And a lot of people think it sounds like, where are you, when they call. And they use it to, to find other things. <coughs> so, a lot like people are saying that. Okay, so, here's this one. Hopefully this one's louder. Right, we know the drill at this point. <laughs> <laughs> On three. One, two, three. Ooh. Ooh. That was pretty good. Pretty good. All right, the next one is the tr the tremolo. Okay. So the, the tremolo sounds like a quavering laugh. And it's used when a loon is disturbed or like in in fear of something. And it's also used as a flight call. So when one male loon is flying over a lake, they will release a tremolo to see if another male is on the lake and they'll call back with a yodel which we'll talk about in a minute so the, this next one is the tremolo <laughs> <laughs> That's another pretty hallmark yeah. call right there. All right, on three. One, two, three. Boom! <laughs> that was awesome. All right, the last one is the yodel. And in fact, <coughs> males are the only ones that actually use a yodel because it's mainly used to establish territory and to defend themselves and their, and, and their family. So, next one. This one's gonna be fun, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> All right, one, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. I like it. All right. So that is all for this stop. So on our way to our next stop, I would like all of you to think about how your family might relate to the family of a loon, or how is it similar, or how is it different? So, are there any questions before we move on to our next stop? Yeah, is it illegal when you are out on the lake to be imitating the loon call? At certain times of the year, it is not recommended for sure. I'm not entirely sure on the, the legality of it, but it's definitely not recommended like during the mating season, like when they're up here in the north. Yep, I, yeah, oh, that, that is a good thing. No, for sure. Do, I'm sorry, what, what would be like the approximate date of that season? Yeah, so is that loons, like April, mm -hmm. May? It varies a little bit. It's usually April till around September, October when they're up in this area. It varies depending on like where they're migrating to and from, but generally those are the months that they're in this area. So yeah, yeah, you definitely don't want to be like on a lake making these sounds over a speaker for sure that could be damaging to their territory and their family structure so mm -hmm. that was a great question thank you any other questions all righty we'll move on to our next stop then all righty so our next topic is loon family structure so did anyone think of any ways that their family structure might be similar to that of a loon Similar or different? Parents are right there always yep. protecting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Keeping an eye. And the babies are always close to the parent, especially when they start getting on the water. Yes. That's awesome. Anyone else? All right. Well, that was awesome. So we're, we're going to start off. Um, this is about, would be about May or, or a April or May when the loons are up north and they're. Um, breeding areas. So the, 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 this is an example of a loon um, do, doing a common like a, a, a courtship ritual. So mm -hmm. they will make themselves look large and try to attract a mate. So, so this is mainly a male that would do this, but it's a pretty interesting behavior there. And then around May, um, the male and 
and female will work together to build a nest. They'll typically lay about two eggs. Um, when creating the nest, one of the loons will actually climb on top of the nest and kind of form the nest to its body shape, which is pretty interesting. There is someone coming, so we'll just step a little bit to the side here. Perfect, thank you. Um, so yeah, this is a picture of a loon on its nest. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. Hello. Good to see you. Yeah. So one of the parents will almost always be on the nest. Um, the nests are made on the shoreline of the lake, so they are pretty vulnerable to any type of predation. So it's pretty essential that the loon stays with the eggs at all times. Next up, we have. A picture of a loon chick with an egg. We also have some feathers here if you would like to feel what the chick may feel like because they are covered in, in down. So if you would like to feel it as I'm walking around with the picture, feel free. So this is a newly hatched chick. Um, the eggs are about three, three inches long. So yeah, they, like I said, they usually lay two eggs. Um, three is rare and four is very uncommon, so not too many at a time, but yeah. And we can see it, its eyes here are actually very dark, which is interesting. So they're dark when they're young and then they turn more of the red color as they age and become closer to maturity. was pretty crazy to me. So after one day, they're usually riding on one of the parents' backs, which is a pretty, pretty unique sight. It's actually pretty fun. Yeah. Pretty adorable here. So yeah. Oh, do you? From Lake Vermilion. Oh, this is our Pike Lake. That is so cool. Yeah, so the the parent's back feathers are actually created with a bit of a divot in the center there. So it's the perfect spot for the chicks to stay and remain safe because they're always with the lean parent. They start hunting on their own at about eight weeks. So still pretty young. You said the chicks will start hunting after eight weeks? Yes. Okay. Yep. They'll start testing it out on their own. Yeah. So at about or at the end of the summer, the loon parents will actually leave their chicks to form their migratory flocks. So the chicks are on their own after about 12 weeks or whenever the loon parents leave to start their migration routes. And the, the chicks actually stay on the water for as long as possible to build up strength to make their own migration path. Um, so they'll stay on the lake almost until it, it's, it's covered in ice. So they'll stay as long as possible. And when they migrate south, they, they actually stay there for about three years to grow up a little bit before they start coming north to stay for the summers and start breeding and having their own chicks. So when they migrate south, they eventually look like this. 
they lose their summer plumage and they gain this winter plumage. Now, does anyone have any observations of how this is different from the summer plumage? Look at its color, it's the, and the color of its eyes. And that really is spotted more like, like a white is on the edge of the feathers. Yeah, yep. Mm -hmm. That's a great one. one. Really yeah. Different. It's a lot mm -hmm. different. I probably would not recognize this as a, as a common moon if I hadn't it's seen it. Right. Yeah, like yeah. It does. there's actually a month where they are unable to fly so it, that leaves them in a bit more of a vulnerable spot but they don't have a lot of, of predators because they're a pretty large bird and they have this sharp beak so there's not a lot of things that mess with an adult moon that is so yeah um next up we are going to move to our next stop are there any questions you said when the chicks do migrate, wherever they choose to go, they will stay in that place for about three years? Yeah, so the, they'll stay in the south for about three years until they start migrating north at about like three or four. Um, and they, they usually don't start breeding until they're five because they prefer to return to their birth lakes. So if there's already a male on that lake, it could be their parent or their sibling that maybe maybe made it there before they did. Um, they can't land on that lake, so they have to find a different one to stay at for the summer. And then in later years, they'll, you know, try to return to their birth lake after that. So, so there can only be one loon on one lake, depending on, on the an, size. Yeah, it depends on the size. On like in average size lake typically there's only one maybe two but on the bigger lakes there could be more for sure so yeah any other questions well it's all good we can move to our next spot we're gonna head a little bit farther down this way right. 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 our next stop so feel free to form a circle All right, so next up we're going to talk about their migration routes. Now we touched on this a little bit before, but like I said in the beginning, the common loon uses Schmeekly and Lake Donis as a rest stop on their migration routes. So when they're traveling north in the spring and then south in the fall, but they can often be seen in Lake Donis, or not often, occasionally be seen in Lake Donis for a few days or something of the sort. So I have a picture of their migration route. Now I know it's a little detailed, but you don't get to see it for long. But if you take a look specifically at Wisconsin, you can see that they're here in the summer. So in the, in, the, in the pink is their breeding range, so in the summer. And then the blue is where they go for the winter. And the yellow is their migration route. So I'll, I'll walk around this way. But you can see in the, in the, in the summer, they inhabit about a fifth or so of this country. So walk around with this. Like my parents did when they sold the farm, they went down south, but hang out by the beach. <laughs> 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 How long does it take them to make their migration? Yeah, so it depends on where they're migrating to and from. Yeah. But it, it usually takes, it can take from days to weeks. Okay. So yeah, they can be flying for a really long period of time. Remind me, uh, you, you mentioned something about how fast do they migrate? Yeah, or so. Fly? They, um, they, my,
migrate. Um, but they have to flap their wings a lot more rapidly than most birds. So they flap their wings about 200 times a minute, which is pretty crazy to think about. Um, and they can travel, um, I think the max is about 600 miles per day. So which is pretty crazy. So that they can be flying for like nine-ish hours straight a day, which is a lot. So yeah, pretty amazing. <laughs> So our next photo is actually the range map of a loon in 1999. So, so the purpose of this is to kind of see what has changed in the last 24 or so years. So again, if we look at the state of Wisconsin, we can see that they occupied about half of the state in 1999, which is pretty interesting. So the new state, so with what lakes they like to be in. So they require clear water, water with lots of fish. And so as the climate gets a bit warmer and the lakes become warmer, um, more algal blooms start to form and the water becomes less clear and they just have a more difficult time finding those optimal conditions. Also, the increased recreation on lakes, so things like boating and other recreational activities, can, d d d can d disturb a loon's habitat, so it makes it difficult for them to stay in that spot as well. Yeah, there's Wisconsin. Right there. and then current. Yeah. So loon numbers were down for a few years, but now they've been regaining some of their population and becoming more abundant. So. Yeah. Are there any mm. questions about any of that? And do you think then, I mean, I know some places they have um, platforms, they'll make yeah. platforms to help out with that mm -hmm. nesting kind of thing, and that helps a little bit? Yeah, for sure. So some people make artificial platforms for loons, so it's not, in the, it's not always on the shoreline where there's more development and more things going on in that area. And it also pr protects them from, from more predation if they're floating in the middle versus on the shoreline or more more wildlife can access them. So. But then also the black flies, right? The last yeah. couple of years have just been awful. Mm -hmm. um, and so a lot of the chicks didn't make it mm -hmm. because of that. And maybe that's you know happening again, or maybe that happened yeah. more so. And that's why there's fewer, I don't know. It's just so much out there. Yeah, that definitely influences the population for sure. Thank you for that. Any other questions or comments? Do they, do they migrate in great big flocks or just like a little family? So it depends. A lot of loons tend to migrate on their own, actually, or some migrate in small flocks, but they're never okay. like, and they're never the size you see like geese <laughs> uh, migrating in. It's never quite to that extent. So they're either on their own or with a couple others. Okay. So, yeah. Good question. I didn't catch it, um, so forgive me if you, I, you said that. How does like jet ski wakes affect loons? Mm. Yeah, so because loons oh, nest on the shoreline, oh, any wake that um, that mm. is formed can affect their their nesting habitat and, and any eggs on the nest. Additionally, they need quiet, calm a areas to raise their young and to kind of show them how to hunt and just let them grow up a little bit without some of those influences. So wakes really affect a loon habitat, especially when they're rearing chicks and things like that. So, yeah. And that too, I mean, lakes, it's common sense, but we all know how that is sometimes. Um, I mean, you know, there are lakes that you know you're not supposed to boat yeah. fast or even, even slowly too close to a loon. I mean, yeah. that's just common sense that everybody knows. Yeah. And, that, and that's an example of why it is really important to have those lakes that don't allow things like motorized boats, where it can be more of a wildlife refuge for things like the common loon. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Any other questions? Hi there. Alrighty. Well, if we're all good, we're gonna head down.
I know we've touched on a couple of these components before, but does anyone have ideas on what would make a good loon habitat? What would loons look for in a loon? Clear water. Clear water? Yep, that's a big one. Large area. Large area. Yeah, those are great ones. So, yeah, a loon looks for a lake with, with clear water so they can see the fish they're diving for. They look for a lake without a lot of algae blooms, without things that would impede that. They also look for a big lake. So Lake Jonas is about 24 acres, and the minimum size that, that a loon would look for is about 10 acres. So L Lake Jonas does fit in that category for a good loon habitat. Um, does anyone know how much space a loon needs to take off? <laughs> Times around this lake. Yeah, sort of. Yeah. So they need a quarter mile. They need a quarter mile to take off because of the structure of their body and the way their legs are placed. So they use their legs and their wings to take off. Like I said, they need about a quarter mile of, a, of like a runway of sorts. And they do run. Yeah, they do run. <laughs> Yeah, so that is a pretty big deal when they are choosing. Oh. And because they need such a large stretch to take off, sometimes the balloons will mistake like a road or a small puddle for a lake. And if they land, then unfortunately they're kind of stranded there because they can't really take off without that quarter mile stretch. Has anyone here seen a loon take off before? Mm, oh yeah. yeah. Every morning. Every morning? <laughs> no. Yeah, so That's that a is... a 98 foot lake and they circle it. Yeah. It's a calm day, they have to circle it. Oh wow, okay, yeah. So I've heard here at, at Lake Jonas, when they do land here, they have to go around the island to yep. get enough sure. space. So <laughs> you, someday you might see them circle around and... You need a good headwind too. Yeah, yup. Yeah, they do use the wind in their migration routes for sure and to take off, so, yeah. So we also touched on this a bit before, but loons primarily eat fish as their main source of food. This is a pretty big fish, so it's pretty incredible. They, they actually don't have teeth. They have little spikes on the roof of their mouth and on their tongue that helps them secure the fish. Um, I'll walk around with this picture here. So loons actually eat about two pounds of fish per day. So if we remember before that loons weigh an average of 10 pounds, they eat about one fifth of their body weight every day. Like loons have a gizzard in which they digest their food. Does anyone know what birds have in their gizzards to help them digest their food? Like stones, pebbles, gravels. Yeah, exactly. So loons dive for the small pebbles on the bottom of the lake. Now, hi there. Can anyone think of a piece of fishing equipment that might look like a small pebble on the bottom oh, of a lake. Yeah. Lead split shot weights. Yup, yeah. yeah, so lead sinkers, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that is a quite uh, unfortunate way that a significant number of loons actually become 
intoxicated with lead. So when they ingest the lead sinkers, thinking they're stones when they're at the bottom of a lake, it actually gives them lead poisoning in most cases, and they usually die within a couple weeks. So uh, that's a pretty unfortunate thing, but they have been s switching to other ma other materials for their sinkers, so it has been helping reduce the fatality of balloons in that respect. So yeah. Yeah, you hear about that if you follow the raptor education group up in Canada, mm -hmm. they get lead poisoning, well, lots of things, eagles, loons, and yeah. you know, and sometimes they save them, many times they do, but mm -hmm. sometimes there's not much. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, they live about 30 years. That's a great question. Oh. Thank you. So yeah, they they can live quite a long time in the wild. So yeah. so you really can't be seeing that same balloon year after year for a long period of time. Yeah. Boy, so the one that's waiting for the lake to open up because your old dad keeps yeah. going back there. <laughs> yeah. 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 For sure. So does anyone have any questions? Well, All right. last year in Wausau, they were put a thing in the paper that balloons were falling because yes. of freezing yeah. rain. Yes. Oh, I did hear about that, yeah. It was pretty crazy. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. They're they saying not they pick up because they can't run on land. Yeah. 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 yeah, that was really sad, for sure. And then they can't get up. So they lose. Yeah. Yeah. There was, I think there was five high schools, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. but yeah. only one in inhabited the northern hemisphere. Well, so, I mean, here in the States, Yes. Where are the other four then? If they're in the northern hemisphere. Uh, so they live mainly on the coasts and like in the yeah. Canada okay. area, so just farther north. Okay. But the the common loon can often be found in the okay. United States. Yeah. Awesome questions. All right. Well, we are gonna start heading back now. Um, so just as a loon, you uses Lake Jonas as a resting stop. This was our last resting stop until we head back. So. You can make your way back if you feel free to enjoy nature on the way back. Maybe you'll hear a loon call here and there. You never know. Um, but yeah, so Alex is going to hand out the raffle tickets as you walk through. So feel free to take one to be entered to win a prize. And yeah, you can make your way back. Thanks. Well, to wrap things up. Um, thank you all for going on that journey with me down to the lake and taking some some rest stops, just as the loons take a rest stop at Schmeekly and their migration routes. Um, yeah, so we can do the, the raffle quick because I know we're short on time. So, does everyone have a ticket? Everyone who wants one. Okay.